All right, so what we're looking at here is a Word document that you would download off of projectmanager.com if you went there looking for a change request form template, which is crazy. The, a change request form is a form. It's not a Word document. So the fact that projectmanager.com, a site that highly respected, been around for a billion years, I'm pretty sure that the people there are excellent project managers, but they're recommending something like a Word document for a change request form because that's just what people do. People have been doing it for a really long time. And then at the bottom of this, they say a change log template for Excel because they're expecting you to pass this around via email or something, copy the information out of it, and then paste it into your change log template in Excel, which is crazy. <laughs> Yo, I'm gonna go through this real quick and tell you why it's you know not a good idea. So first, let's look at this uh, project name field. See it right here, the project name, and then right in front of it, there's a blank space. But right underneath here, there's also a blank space. Immediately, I'm forced to think, I don't know where I'm supposed to put my information. I don't know if I put it in that first area or if I put it in this area down, down here. It might make sense to some people to just put it down here because this field is bigger. But it might make sense to other people because this right here just looks like you put it there, keep it on the same line as a project name, and you're fine, and then this is a space. It's It doesn't matter which way projectmanager.com meant to be the right way. This is one of the issues you run into when you start designing, using Word documents to design forms. That's an issue because you're making me think that's too much. Just give it to me like a regular form. Same thing with change name right here, and them doing it again, same deal. Then we get to the number field. So now we have a new problem. We can fit the number in there, no problem. Uh, but then we also have this space underneath here. But now the new issue is what number are you talking about? Are you talking about the change request ID? And if you are take, talking about the change request ID, the problem there is that now you're asking me, the person, to name that. If I do it, my colleague does a change request form and another colleague does a change request form. That's three of us now. Who enters number one or number two and number three? This, this, there's no way for us to know how to do that unless we're like talking to each other every time we get ready to put in a change request form. That's crazy. It should be inside of a system and the system should keep track of those numbers for you. You do this and you're introducing human error. Requested by. Okay, no big deal. I guess I put my name there. And uh, the difference here with SharePoint is that when you put in a request, SharePoint already knows who you are. So you don't even have to ask for this information. Uh, the contact information, I guess, is the same as requested by, but you can put an email or a phone number. I don't know, whatever. Uh, then you got the date. So here's the issue with the date field. Anytime you have a date field, people are going to write the date the way they want to write it. Don't do that. Just give them the option to pick from a little mini calendar and then let the date put itself inside of the field. This is just how we use the Internet. Nothing crazy here. But when you do things like create forms with word documents this is what you end up with a way not to be able to do that something super basic that we do on the internet today description of change no big deal reason for change no big deal but you know it is a big deal when we get to this part right here talk about yo circle one <laughs> circle how what exactly do you mean circle one is this a printed form that would make sense but it's not this is an electronic form that we're supposed to be filling out so how do I circle that? I think they really want me to get a pen out like what I'm doing right here and circle it. That's crazy. We, we have tools that are way better than this that we don't need to be drawing on top of our forms. More, man. All right, impact on deliverables, no big deal. Impact uh, uh, of not responding to the change, also not a big deal. But then we get date needed same issue with the date before we have to be able to just pick it from a calendar that way we do not introduce it introduce the human error in there or the separation of data where i put in my date one way and you put in your date another way or i forget to put the end of the year on my date so now it looks crazy all of that approval of request i don't know what this means i don't know if that's supposed to be a yes or a no i don't know if that's supposed to be a name i don't know what's going on there or the status who knows you don't get to pick from a drop down, so I have no idea. And then there's no explanation of what this field is supposed to do anyway. That's crazy. And then we have date again, which is also confusing because we already had date up here. But I guess this is the date that it was supposed to be approved. Don't know. 
but way too much thinking being done in just this top form, just this top section of the form. We're going to leave the change impact section alone. Uh, that's a bunch of details that, you know, we could talk about that, but that, that's for another time. Uh, this bottom section right here telling me to circle one again, that's an issue. It says sign offs. So that means I'm looking for two signatures. I guess that's right here and right here. Cool. But uh, why is there only one comment section? Are you telling me there's only one comment section for both people that have to sign? That's crazy. Um, and then I guess we just put in a date. No big deal. Uh, but yeah, this is this is wild. We should not be um, using Word documents as forms and filling them out that way. They're not forms. They're word processing. That's what it's for. So um, we're going to get into computer. I'm going to show you why this is way better with SharePoint, a tool that you already have access to because you or your organization is already paying for it. If not, then you need to get your hands on Microsoft 365. Uh, but I imagine if you are using Word, you also have access to the rest of the 365 suite. So uh, let's get into SharePoint. Let me show you why it's 2 million times better. Okay, now we're jumping into SharePoint. Before I show you the change requests inside of SharePoint, I want to show you real quick that this is my project site. So this is a, the project is the ADTD for military surveillance. The reason I'm showing you this is because story for another day, but if you manage a project plan for your projects, how are you doing it? The way I do it is put everything inside of one site. So any and everything that I need for this project is sitting right here at one link on one site. That's the way you need to manage your projects. But like I said, story for another day. Uh, let's jump over to these change requests. And when I come here, I can see all of the change requests that's been put in for the project. Now, unlike that Word document, if somebody needs to put in a change request, they don't get an email sent to them with a Word document or go to a library and download a file. What they do is come here and like the internet, they just press a button. So if I hit add new item, look what comes up, a form. In this form, I can put in the project name. Uh, there's no confusion about where I put the change name, the description, all of those things that were confusing on the Word document. By default, I get the name of the project. Then I can put in a change name. Now, what I wanted to do was, you know what I mean? We're going to use um, the Lion King because who doesn't love the Lion King and Simba and all that? So we're going to, uh, the change name is we, we're going to ex, uh, do an expansion of Pride Rock Patrol. That's the change we want to make. And then the description is uh, we're going to increase the number of daily patrols uh, around Pride Rock. So this is the details of that change. We're going to increase the number of daily patrols around Pride Rock and the surrounding territories to ensure the safety of and security of the Pride. You know what I mean? All right. Now, the reason we're, we're doing this is because after um, Simba came back, um, from defeating Scar and all that, it's crucial that we got to maintain vigilance and uh, against potential threats and ensure the stability of the Pride's territory. That's the whole reason we're doing it. Now, remember that part on the Word document where I was confused about if we were going to circle or, you know, how we're going to highlight it? We don't do that. On a form, we just pick from a drop down. This is all basic stuff that you're used to. Nothing is crazy here. It's just that for some reason, people think it's okay to be out into the world and using the internet like normal flying through things, being efficient. But as soon as you start to work at your organization, it's okay to do things like send Word documents out and pretend that they're forms. Not okay. Let's not do that. You know what I'm saying? You have a tool at your fingertips that allows you to bypass that whole uh, process and act like the rest of the world. So impact on deliverables, we'll say that, you know, additional patrols is going to require uh, uh, relocation of the alliances, the alliances, all of that, you know what I mean? And then the impact is... Uh, if we uh, fail to increase the patrols, then, you know, what I'm saying them hyenas is coming back. It's going to be crazy. Now, when do we need this? What we do is we pick from a calendar. We don't put in our date format and type things the way we want to unless necessary. Uh, I'll say we need this in like two weeks. Drop it in there and then I hit save. That's the way you should put in a change request, not a word document. Here's the other thing, too. You get to quantify this information. So as the as the change request goes into this list that we're looking at right here, we quantify the we can quantify the information. We can see how many were high priority, how many were medium, how many did we put in all all together. This ID number, like I told you about before, that comes in automatically. I know it looks funny, but once I refresh the page, you'll see the real ID there. So here it is at the bottom. It's change ID number five, and it's the expansion of Pride Rock Patrol, like we just put in. So there's no copying and pasting from a word, a, a form, which is a word document, 
we copy and paste into a log, which is an Excel spreadsheet, and that data is separate. That is crazy. You should not have a change request form in a Word document, and you should not be copying and pasting from a change request form into an Excel spreadsheet. You know what I'm saying? So just make sure that you catch me on LinkedIn.